Hello everybody, today we have a super interesting video with Andy Mai, the owner of studying.com. We already had an interview with Andy that will be listed below this video so we can go and check this other video. And today we are going to talk about how to find hot selling products for dropshipping. How are you today, Andy? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm so excited you have me back on. Really enjoying the interview. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to share um, what me and my students do when it comes to finding winning products. I'm, I'm excited to just reveal everything on today's video. Great. So uh, let's jump into a screen share and just start and I will just ask you some questions during the uh, process that you do. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, um, right now we're on AliExpress. I like to find all my products on AliExpress. Now, a lot of people like to use spy sites, but I found out spy sites aren't too good just because you're always going to be two, three, five, ten steps behind the trend. Because by the time it gets on a spy site, that product is already saturated, already sort of scaled, and you're not going to be able to really get much piece out of the pie. Hence, I like going ahead and doing my own product research on AliExpress and looking for brand new winning products. So um, let's go through the few strategies that we teach in our program. So let me jump to product research. So the first strategy I'll be going over is the homepage strategy. So I go through this strategy three times, but I want to go ahead and show you what the homepage strategy is. So usually, as you can see, right now, all the products here are sort of tailored to me. Like I'm a fan of like men's T-shirts, I'm a fan of like, I have a fish tank. I do some hiking and camping. So I have all this camping gear. So you definitely don't want to go ahead and look at the home page on a sort of normal window. I'm going to start by opening up a incognito browser. So let's go ahead and new incognito window. Now let me go ahead and share that. New share. All right. So this is the incognito window. So let me just share the whole screen. And let's go to aliexpress.com. And now these products are going to be just the hottest products in AliExpress worldwide. It's not going to be biased or tailored to anyone. This is just sort of the hot products as of right now. And as you can see, scrolling down already, I'm already seeing very interesting items. Like this looks interesting. This looks interesting. So what the homepage strategy is, is scrolling through the homepage and opening up any product that looks intriguing. So I'll be scrolling down anything that's new and I haven't seen before, I'll open it up in a new page. Okay, so now I've got like probably like nearly 10 tabs open. Now I'll start going through them in depth. So this is just like a mini refrigerator. This is pretty Man, what does it run on? Does it run on electricity or batteries? How does this work? <laughs> so I think looks this super product, cool. yeah, it looks interesting. As you can see, it only has one review, five orders. So this is a brand new product. People have not tested it. And this is something that I'd probably rate. Like this product is probably like a, you know, 5.5 out of 10. So I would go ahead and put this on an Excel sheet. Um, and I'll write 5.5. So let me find an example. So let me open up that Excel sheet I usually use. So the product uploading tracking sheet. So these are sort of the ratings, but you want to go ahead and create a product source page just like this with the product, AliExpress link, pricing and rating. And you want to put every product. So I'll go ahead and I'll put in this link Put it here. The name would be something like portable refrigerator. Refrigerator. Okay. The price it costs. Oh wow, pretty pricey. Let's see if we can. Is it cheaper shipped to other country, United States? Let's say United States. Wow, so this product will cost around so plus thirty dollars um, forty. This would cost roughly fifty dollars shipped, which is pretty pricey. Now, fifty dollars shipped, I'm going to rate this product like a four out of ten, just because 
it's just so expensive. But um, if you take the US warehouse? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's try US warehouse. You're right. Okay, oh. so it's around $42. So let me change it to $45. <laughs> good catch. Good catch. Now let's go to this. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. It's like a base that warms up through like, it just warms up your mug. Wow. This product would be like a six out of 10. Something like this. This is really, really funny. And look how cheap it is. It's literally $2 and 25 cents shipped to Australia. Like this is something that's cheap. You can see the rating reviews to orders. Most of these orders are not from drop shipping. This is organic orders because there's like, 600 reviews and only real people leave reviews. If this was a dropshipper, they would not leave reviews. So this product, by using just a simple image like this, this could be your image ad. This product I'd rate like a 7.5 out of 10. This is definitely something that is Facebook and the margins are really high because this is really cheap. So this is a really good product. So I'm going to put this here so all my other students can sort of take it. Um, let's put in sad frog something like this now it costs two dollar fifty and i'll put this like at a seven point five out of ten so that's a pretty good product let's go to this so this looks like it's just normal um car caps nothing special close that this is pretty normal. Close this. This is copyright. Close that. This, you might not be able to advertise on Facebook because it's a weapon. So close this. This is a pretty hot product. But I'm scared it might be saturated. Oh, but this one glows in the dark. This is actually a solid product. This is like, since it's a kid's product, not many people like to buy toys on Facebook for their kids. So it's a bit harder to sell because you're not targeting the people. You're targeting parents of your target audience. But this is like a stress relief toy. It sort of reminds me of the fidget spinners. Um, so I'd probably rate this product like at a, like a 6.5 out of 10. Now, you might be asking, okay, like with all these ratings, what products would you rate? Uh, what products would you go ahead and advertise? So... Usually, I test anything that's above 6 out of 10. Anything below, I'll just leave it there just in case I want to go back to it. But I'll probably just test a product, any product that's above 6 out of 10. Um, that's sort of worth a test. So this one's roughly, you know, $4 shipped. Um, glow in the dark, sticky balls, something like that. This, this is pretty cool. I think this is probably a bit too niche and people can't be bothered sort of actually setting this up. But this could actually do well if you put together a tutorial because I'm looking at the photos. This is actually really cool. I think if you can put together a cool video, clearly showing how to install this and how easy it is, you can definitely sell this for like $30, $50 because it, it's, it, it's worth $50 if you can create a tutorial for this. So this product is probably like a 6.75 out of 10 with the right creative. And this, ooh, this looks interesting. Oh, so this is a heat pen. Wow. But it can do engravings. What does it do? Does it melt things? Let's see what's called. Engraving pen. Wow. And this is really cheap. $3. So you could easily sell this for $20. You could even sell this for $29.95. This would be like a solid, I reckon, 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. And that costs roughly $2.50. Wow, $2.50. That's insane. How would you put the rating if you wouldn't have all your experience? Exactly. That's a good, good question. So one is you can look at the three key factors. If it's one, high interest, two, hard to obtain, three, wow factor. 
So if it has all three, it's likely going to be seven to 10. If you only have two out of three, it's going to be seven, five to seven. And if you only have one, it's going to be two to five. So this is one way to get the rating. But another way to sort of get the rating is we have a critiques module where literally I rate thousands and thousands of products. And as you can see, there's like, there's like 50 episodes where each one of these are products, students from all over the world. And they're asking me to rate all their different products. So if you go through and watch like freaking 54 episodes of me going through 54 videos, um, that's the easiest way to learn product. By the time you watch through all these, you're going to be able to rate products yourself after seeing me rate a thousand products. Or you wow. can just copy this rating. And do you have all these videos on the studying.com? Correct. Or all be right here. Nice. So yeah, that's the number one strategy, the homepage strategy. And that's sort of where I find a lot of new winning products. And that's basically the strategy from A to Z, going through the homepage, opening products that are interesting, new, new tab. Um, and yeah. Now I do have another two strategies, which is the product research keyword strategy and the recommended strategy. And with these three strategies, we're able to easily find five to 10 products every day um, that are worth testing and worth looking into. Um, now, I don't know if we have time to go through the next two strategies, um, but um, the keyword strategy is basically a strategy where we use different keywords um, to look for newly listed items on AliExpress, searching up different keywords. And then the recommended strategy, this is a strategy where we go ahead and look at these hot products. And as you can see, the recommended for you, look at this. There's already two very interesting products that I want to open up. Like going on the side, wow, these are interesting looking products. Scroll down to the bottom, look at these seller recommendations, more to love, interesting, interesting. This looks interesting. So this is an example, a, a sort of sped up example on how to use a recommended strategy where you can find one hot, interesting product and use the recommended tabs to find three more interesting products related to this seven out of 10 product. So you combine both of these strategies together, the homepage and the recommended. Exactly. And then the keyword strategy, we go ahead and search keywords as creative. With the keyword strategy, look, literally searching creative, you're already finding creative and interesting products already, just like this. And then now with this, you could go ahead and go through, you know, multiple pages. And usually when you get to page like 10, page 20, that's when you start seeing really interesting products that have not been tested before. Um, oh. like, yeah, like a lot of these products, like I'm looking at some of these products and I know some of these products has worked for students of ours. Um, there's a lot of interesting products here. And this is just one of the many keywords we use. And then you could also sort by newest to find the newest release products on AliExpress. And this would put you far, far ahead of the trend. Um, and then obviously when you open up these stuff, you can go ahead and again, use the recommended strategy um, to go ahead and look at all the similar related products. Um, wow, this is an interesting product. This might work. This is like a solid, like a, but it's pretty pricey. Um, but shipping is free, which is good. And it looks really heavy. Like this could be worth $70. Like I wouldn't mind paying $70 for this product. Uh, and it has a really nice image already. So yeah, I think this would probably um, be like a seven out of 10 and you could use the recommended items and you could find a bunch of more interesting products. Um, so strategy number three, the recommended strategy would be combined with the homepage strategy and the keyword strategy. So you don't start with the first pages, right? You jump directly to uh, the pages like page number 10. So there are products that people still didn't test until now. Exactly, exactly. So when using the keyword strategy, um, the deeper you go, the more interesting the products, but you can find even interesting products on page number one. So let's go back to best match and you could even sort by orders. Um, but let's, 
I'm curious. Let's go to page 30 and see what, what, what we see in page 30. Wow. Okay. So page 30 looks like it gets pretty boring, but there's a few interesting items here. Like these items would even do really well on like um, eBay dropshipping or Amazon dropshipping, especially since this is sort of what like people like to search for um, in a sort of reactive um, marketplace where they're looking for items. Um, but yeah, the deeper you go, the more unique products that people, other people probably have not found of, you're going to see. But it looks like when you go to 30, the products do get boring. So let's jump back to like 15. Because I do find like page 7 to page 20, the sweet spot for finding really interesting products. Oh, this looks really cool. Oh, wow. This is really cool. Wow. It's a 3D bookmark. Wow, this is cool. The profit margin, the, the perceived value for this product would be low, but you can definitely, like people would definitely pay $10 for this. If you can get yeah, it for could also $3 sell a few of this. Exactly. You could sell multiple. You could package it where you could sell one for 10, two for 15, three for 20. And it goes to get people to buy three for 20 and your margins at that point will be at least, you know, $15. Um, and that's a healthy margin. So this, this is like a really cool looking product. Like I'd rate this like a, like a six out of 10. Yeah. So yeah, those are the three main strategies that we use to find winning hot new products that are untapped. Do you have any other tips of what you would avoid when you work with these uh, strategies? Like what you wouldn't do? Perfect. So let me go to the thoughts on certain products. So one, saturated products would probably be something I would avoid. Uh, but when it comes to products to avoid, when it comes to research, you definitely want to avoid sort of products that are sort of copyrighted. They're sort of health-related products. Uh, where it's promising to lighten your skin or lose your weight, you definitely want to avoid those really um, hot products that are not, they're, they're a bit gray. Next is personalized products. If you watch this video, my thoughts on personalized product is it is pretty good, but it's really hard to scale. Um, products that are near copyright, products that have, logos of let's say Louis Vuitton, but it doesn't, it's not called Louis Vuitton. It might be called um, Lennon. Uh, what's the name that starts with LV? Um, I don't know. Lennon Bernard. Um, and it's like some copy. You definitely want to avoid that. Um, now, another question I get asked a lot is if a listing has less orders, does it mean it's trustworthy? The answer is no. You actually want to look for products that have less listings, I meant less orders, because that's an untapped product. Um, another thing, sometimes everyday products really work. One of our students, his winning product was a hair clipper. That's like an everyday product, but that worked really, really well. Um, and then you want to avoid competing against existing one of brands. Like you don't want to drop ship a headphone because no one's going to, buy your blank headphone. They're going to go ahead and go to Bose. They're going to go to Beats. So you definitely don't want to sell, you know, a, um, a different headphone or a different branded shoe because everyone's going to buy Nike. You definitely don't want to buy like a AliExpress version camera because people only trust Sony. Um, so you definitely don't want to compete against well existing known brands. Um, yeah, I have a bunch of tips. Like you want to avoid selling fragile items. Um, you are responsible for the items you sell. So you, do, you definitely don't want to get sued. What my thoughts on AliExpress brands, because AliExpress has its own brands and I highly recommend you selling those products because if you can drop ship someone else's brand, you can basically um, be like a sub you know how people can sub-lease apartments? You can sort of sub-lease their brand. Well, I know people that sell products. Um, for example, let's say this product, um, the Ouch Bookmark. Now, let's say Ouch Bookmark is actually, let's search this up to make sure it's not copyrighted. Ouch Bookmark. 
okay, cool. So it looks like this is like an AliExpress product. And I don't think there's like a brand to it. Perfect. So product like this, you can literally buy the domain, ouch, bookmark. Now let's see if it's taken already. <laughs> wow. So it looked like someone has literally done that. They've taken this brand and they're going to go ahead and create a Shopify store using this brand and basically subleasing this brand. Um, and that's sort of another thing I talk about in this video. But yeah, there's tons of tips um, and I could just go on and on selling seasonal items. Definitely you want to capitalize on seasonal items. Um, you definitely don't want to sell knives because that's going to be hard to sell on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, I could just go on and on when it comes to tips. Super interesting information. And uh, it's cool that you are going to other method than just going and scrapping like uh, Facebook ads or, you know, using tools that show everyone the same products. Uh, I super like it. And I'm sure that it will give very, like a huge value for uh, the audience who will watch uh, this video. Uh, so uh, thank you for the information. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more what you have on your uh, courses on the studying.com so people can know more about you, about what you do there, what they can learn there, how it works? Yeah, most definitely. So what you guys just saw, that's a breakdown of, I think, three or four subsections within our product research section within our course. So you guys basically saw what our course looks like. Now the membership portal, it's not going to stay like that. It's always going to be changing every single day. We're updating the platform, making it more user-friendly, fixing our bugs, finding ways to better organize the videos. Um, and basically we're always tweaking it. But what you saw is basically what we do at studying.com where we sort of really try to give you guys the best course and give you guys the most value um, that's up to date, that's multivariated, where we go over each topic multiple different times, not only once. So it's a multivariated course. And we really gamified the whole experience, having our own platform where you guys have a community, there's a leaderboard, you gain XP when you watch videos. Um, and our goal is just to basically give you guys basically what I wish I had when I got started into dropshipping. Cool. So uh, people can see uh, more about dropshipping and different uh, topics on uh, studying.com. I will attach a link uh, below uh, this video so people can uh, take a look what uh, they can uh, find there. And uh, again, thanks for uh, this uh, amazing interview. The previous interview will be also below this video so you can know more about and uh, about studying.com. And uh, thanks for coming. Thanks so much, Leo. I really appreciate you having me. Hopefully I was able to provide value and hopefully you guys now know how to find cool, hot, new winning products. Yeah, I'm sure that it will uh, help people. By the way, everyone who watched this video can use this strategy for uh, any other supplier. I guess that it will work also for, for Amazon or for sure for Etsy, for example. If you write on Etsy Creative, you will find a lot of interesting stuff. So uh, go ahead and uh, think out of the box use the strategies that you learned here and uh, let's uh, boost your sales. Bye.